Hey guys, it's Carol and thank you for stopping by for my stitching update. Um, it has been a month. There's a ton of stitching that has happened in the meantime and I am really excited to share it with you. And so let's just jump into it. And first is a finish. Um, this is a little awkward because I don't have the finished object to show you because it's already been returned to its owner. But this is gonna be Holiday Hooties, which is a dimension stocking kit that I did to help someone out so that her granddaughter would have a Christmas stocking ready to go this year. And it was a blast. I got it done pretty much as I said I would. The back stitching took longer than I thought it would. I think I've said this before, I'll say it again. Do your back stitching as you go along. I have never had it look bad if I do it as I go along, but I know that if I get to the end, I struggle. Like, it takes longer than you think it does, and it seems so small. Like, oh, this is no big deal. The X's are bigger and more work. Yeah, but the back stitching is tedious. I love it though. I love how it looks. It was 100% worth it. Obviously, um, what I'm showing you does not have the personalization on it. That was like basically the one thing I said. I wasn't gonna share it that way. I will tell you, so I did put the name on. The line that Dimensions has on the pattern, if you use that line as the basis to where to put your letters, everything is gonna be skewed too high based on the, it's like it was centered up for the small letters, but it is not centered up for the capital letters. So I had to, I got, I think four letters in, realized it was gonna be a problem, had to go pick it out, start over again. But that's fine, I love it. Isn't it amazing? I am so happy that I did this stocking kit and that I have stockings now for everybody in my family and not everybody knows it. So I don't wanna get them all excited. Like, oh, you're gonna get a stocking done? I'm not gonna get a stocking done this year. I'm hoping I can have two of them done by next year. <sighs> that would require me to like really, I don't know, focus? Focus me. That's not gonna happen. But yes, the finish was great. The only downside to the finish is in many ways, it makes me be like, okay, I'm done. I put all my cross stitch down for like three days. So I got like nothing done. That's okay. Like we can always use a break. It was such a relief to be done. And then I went right back to doing all the things. None of these are in any particular order. I have gotten a lot better about returning to stitching every day, but that does not mean that I have been recording what I've been doing. I actually, like, I know I've worked on all these, but I can't tell you for how long or what my intent was. Right now, I'm just kind of doing the where the whim takes me, which is I stitch on a project as long as I want to, and when I get tired of it, I move to the next one. And hold on, there's like a lot in here. It's a month's worth of stitching, guys, and I've been busy. So, first up is Heaven and Earth Designs mini interior of Tintern Abbey. This is what you last saw. And this is where I am. Um, you'll see, I am most of the way done with row seven, so this would be 5,600 stitches um, based on the amount through here. I got a lot done. Um, the nice part is you're picking, when I pick colors over here, they really fill down. I mean, you can see very well where the bottom of the page is here. And I love it. Now my goal, I started this one Thanksgiving of last year. I want this page finish before Thanksgiving this year. Um, for my last video, I said, hey, if I like keep going the pace I'm going, like my kids, will be, like my youngest will be graduated from high school, or no, from college, I said college, and that would be right, because this is actually in total 16 pages. The page four, eight, 12, and 16 are small width-wise, and then 13, 14, 15, so 16 will be like a tiny square, are not full page drops, but this is a pretty decent sized design. Um, but I, I can get a decent amount done if I focus. So this one is really progressing nicely. I'm pretty sure I can get that page finished by Thanksgiving. I think that when I go to the next page, I'm gonna do typewriter within blocks. I just, for whatever reason, I'm feeling kind of called for that. Like right now doing this strict all the way across is really, uh, it's not speaking to me as strongly as I might like. I think it's what's happening because when I'm over here, I'm like obviously filling in so much and then here it gets kind of left. And I think if I were doing a block at a time, it would have felt a little 
more organic. It, I don't know. It's not really that important. I just know that I've been really happy with how this comes along. And I would say if you're the type who's never done a full coverage and you want to, but like most Hades are huge and you feel like you're never going to finish them, the minis are totally doable. This is on an 18 count Ada. Um, it is bigger than a fat quarter, but it's not a full fat half. So, um, I mean, my sister, she's doing this. She's literally doing on the loops and threads Ada from Michaels and hers looks fine. So um, don't let that like, don't be overwhelmed when you see other people who are doing stuff that's like 600 stitches tall and 525 wide. That's the size of my head. Um, this one is like 300 and change by 220 and change. In other words, eminently doable, but still pretty good detail. Like you can see the clouds that are happening. Can't entirely tell what's going on here yet, but that's because I haven't finished it. But you can see how the whatever archway here is developing. So it's really good. A last burst of summer happened for me with Musilla Summer Symphony. This is an out of print kit from 1994. I think I say that every time and I always have to look because I never remember from time to time. You think I would, but I don't. Anyway, um, I got this one because there's a ton of awesome unopened kits on eBay. Guys, if you can't find them in the store, you don't like what you see online, check out eBay. Maybe if you're a type who likes some of these not in style. I mean, this is still almost a full coverage piece, um, but it's not nearly as daunting is a hate. This is going to be like 11 by 14. Is it 11? Yeah, 11, 11, 14 by 11. Length. But anyway, um, it's really pretty. I showed you the picture. My mom did this one at some point along the way and it turned out fantastically. So, and there's a bunch still floating around. I don't know. Like I said, I'm a big fan of scouring eBay for old stuff. So there, that's my um, pitch for you for that. Now, I didn't do very much on this because I just realized the season was changing and I wasn't really feeling summer anymore. Here's what was last time. And this is today. I thought I was going to finish the sky up into the corner. No, I, I mean, it's not far. It's like five, six rows. It is really not far to get up there. But the problem is I started looking across and it was going to pull me into all the greens and I didn't really want to deal with the greens. So what I did is filled out pretty much as much of the coral and burgundy. It's coral, burgundy, clay, and I think light terracotta are the four colors that are running through here. So I wanted to just finish those up. They felt, it was like the good, perfect early fall. I did this shortly after I filmed my last video um, while I was on travel and I haven't picked it up since. And I suspect this one is now going into hibernation until springtime, FYI. But I have really enjoyed pulling it out this year. I love the amount of progress I've put in all together. This is a super fun, wonderful stitch, and I'm really enjoying it. A little more in the seasonal motif is Custom Crafts Autumn Chapel. <laughs> Custom Crafts did not actually chart this, by the way. This is in conjunction with Artisy, Tarina Clark, went ahead and she did the charting for this. So if you don't find the booklets, I don't know if it's even still on Custom Crafts website, although you can find it around like if you just search it, but also it is on Artisy's website as Autumn Chapel. Um, I, there's actually, if you go on Artisy, there's the other three seasons and I may have bought all three seasons. Oh, the Winter Chapel one is gorgeous. That is like, I cannot wait to start that. Here's where it was last time. And here it is today. Oh, you're gonna say, but wait, down here. Yeah, I'm pulling out all the park threads. I am gonna fold this now for you. Um, this is what you would have seen before. Very lovely. See this humongo? I measured it out. It was going to go down to here. I couldn't do it that just was not gonna happen. So I did a new start on the same piece of fabric because I did figure out this is my start. This is my corner down here. It still leaves me, it's a smidge over two inches march on top and bottom. So plenty as far as I'm concerned. And you'll note I'm going cross country because I don't like parking threads. I've mentioned that in prior videos. I think it's every time I get it, like this notion it's going to be beautiful and great and parking's going to be different for me to this time 
it's not I don't love it um, so this one like I said it's a cross-country Yule note I have thread grid lines for my Hade um, they're not great because honestly yes I pierce it routinely and I have to I sit there with tweezers and I I, there's no way you're gonna like pull it all. I do it section by section if you've noticed and that is so that I can make sure that I fish out And it's in a silk that is definitely shinier than the cotton So it's easy to distinguish and I get out all the fibers, but this time I decided that I was like, ah, you know what? I'm gonna try little itty bitty bits of graphite. These are all dark colors through here So I'm not worried about marking the fabric such in the way that it's gonna be problem like going through um, There is lighter spots over here. They may not get gridded. I may have one of the things I found that with cross country and forgotten that since so much of it ends up referencing off of other points, I don't really use the grid as much unless I really have to. Um, so I don't know, that's a, you know, people have different ideas on how they feel it. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not attached to any one. There's no one true way of marking up your fabric. The only thing is I've never tried any of the easy counts and I've heard that those are nice, but it's also a pain to get the markings to disappear. So I, you know, whatever. This is what I'm doing for this one right now. Um, this is an 18 count white Ada. Pretty, pretty boring, but I'm just happy that I did make that call to go ahead. Oh, by the way, see, there's like a gigantic margin on the left and right. I have like no problem there. I still don't know how I miscut this. Right. Next up is Mirabilia number one for this month, and that is Winter Queen. I just decided that I was gonna kind of keep working with her. She actually got the airplane ride. Um, so I have a picture on my phone. I've never done anything with it, but it's literally like me with her in hand. I had a window seat. I like the seriously great spot on the plane. And it was like right as we had crossed over the Mississippi River. But anyway, Here's where she was last time. And here she is today. I didn't, I did a little bit of fill in over here, but most of what I'm working on is really just this big cloak in her lap. I am loving it. This is such a beautiful, fun piece. And I don't know, like I put it down and I just hadn't picked it back up because I've been doing other stuff. But now I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, that's the downside of doing these videos. I literally pick up all my projects like in a single day and I'm like, oh, I wanna work on all of you. I am really unfocused on stitching on days that I do this. But yes, I think she's coming along really beautifully. It's not that far from here to where you start seeing the blues come back from like her skirt. And I'm really looking forward to that part of the pattern. The next project that I'm gonna share is my other Haid, Winter Kiss by Adele Sessler. I was not expecting to be working on this at all. I literally was putting the project bag away, but it was me touching the project bag and I was like, ooh, I need to work on this. Here's where it was last time. Here's where it is today. I am um, two rows complete on page three and getting a decent chunk into row three. I was, seriously, I wasn't expecting to do much on this and so this amount was like awesome. Um, this is on a 25 count, I think it's Ecru. I have said both Ecru and Ivory and like, but I'm not sure what it is. I have to really go look. I'm, I wrote it down somewhere at one point in time that I actually knew when I knew the answer, but off the top of my head, I've forgotten. Anyway, it's obviously a neutral, it's Lugana. It's pretty soft to work with. Um, Again, I told you, these are all, like I said, a grid with just sewing thread because I had a bunch of it around. I do not love it, hence why as soon as I finish a 10 by 10 block, I start cutting away the edges that are no longer needed for counting. Like, I just, I mean, on one hand, it is like a kind of like you get a feel for, hey, I'm still like over here, still working, but like these are done. It just provided like a little mini sense of completion. I think I'm going to pull this out some more this winter. I will say that getting the proper contact lenses have meant that I can really actually work on it. I didn't realize that part of the problem why I hadn't been working on this is that it was really just so hard for me to see. So I think that being able to see it again, 
you'll see more of it. I do love the colors. Uh, and by the way, this is like really not a ton of colors because this is supposed to be um, a very grayscale type project. There's only like 39. It's pretty cool for that. Um, it is a huge piece though. It is 525 stitches by like 600 and something. So I will never get this done, but I'm gonna enjoy the process. Speaking of enjoying the process, one that I kind of burnt out on and did not expect to touch for like a while, Modern Folk Embroidery is the Fruit of Plenty. This is the 2021 sale. I'm gonna just stop real fast and say, guys, I have now seen the 2024 sale. He put it on his Instagram. <gasps> I'm in love. I'm totally gonna do it. It's supposed to be smaller than this. Oh, also, I guess I should put this in context because I know I had done earlier this year the how many hours does it actually take to do this? But I wanna give you another <sighs> If you're the type of person who feels like, why can't I keep up with this? Like one of the things that Jacob wrote on his Instagram announcing in the 2024 was that it is smaller than previous years. Um, I don't know, he doesn't, cause I, it's on like the first one. This is 250 roughly by 300 and I think 25 roughly. That's a really big piece. That's just the size of a mini hate. Nobody says to themselves, man, I couldn't get a mini hate done in like, is extra stitching over the course of the year, what's wrong with me? You'd be like, no, it's a huge piece and oh, if I get to it, I get to it, and if I don't, I don't. But I think it's because of the way it's said is, oh, it's supposed to be a monthly stitch along, like surely you can do this and you're like worried about it. Like, no, don't feel like that. This is, like I said, this is big. Um, I think I had to come to terms with that this year, and that's part of the burnout is when I had said, oh man, it would be a really awesome stretch goal to get for December. But when I said stretch goal, like way back in last year, whenever I did my um, plans video, I was like, oh, I, surely I can stay on top of this. And the answer is no, no, I couldn't. It was too big and I just didn't prioritize it. And that is okay. I even got over the fact that it's not going to say 2023, it's going to say 2024, and it'll be awesome and amazing because I'm going to know how much fun I've had working on this project through this entire year. Here's what it was last time. And here it is today. Um, I'm not going to keep going on the same, like you see, obviously I'm still working that center motif on May. Uh, I don't like to leave my needle and thread like clearly I hit a point and just like okay I'm done for now but I didn't expect to pick this up at all so I'm really happy and like when I did pick it up my original thought was can I get this done by the end of the year and I had this whole like I even really quickly figured out how long I would need to work every day to make it happen and then I realized that was absolutely insane and I was going to hate myself and I was going to hate cross stitching by the end of it and I don't love deadlines so I don't need to do that to myself. So, like I said, uh, I'm gonna just kinda amble through it. I mean, if I get through the rest of this half by the end of the year, fantastic. If I don't, I don't, and I'm cool with that too. My next Mirabilia that I worked on, actually I say my next, it's my last. I did not pull Autumn Queen out again this time. I'll come back to that in a minute. But anyway, uh, Royal Holiday was what I did on the plane coming back from vacation. Uh, this was really fun because it was really full flight and I was not sitting with my husband because just the way the seats worked out. Um, so this the random dude sitting next to me thought my embroidery hoop was like a drum head or something. I thought that was really strange. Like, dude, do you think I'm like sitting here and like stretching out this fabric so I can sit here and like get my percussion on in a plane full of people? <laughs> I don't know, it was really weird. I mean, then I explained to him that it was, you know, an embroidery hoop. Because, oh, am I the jerk with my 12 inch embroidery hoop on the plane? That's okay, I had the Q snaps in the airport, like full size, I didn't care, I was spending a lot of time in the airport, so whatever. Um, but I will tell you, even though I was sitting in the middle seat, I never went over the sides. I was very good about sticking within my, like if I was gonna stitch, I wasn't gonna, it just meant that I had a lot of more straight up and down as opposed to if I was sitting in my chair at home, there's a lot more, like I tend to pull this way or down, like I two hand stitch. Um, but I definitely do add a diagonal, like in the plane I was doing a lot. It was not the most comfortable, but an okay amount done. Here's where it was last time. And this is what I managed to get, like you'll see. A lot more going on here. Did a little bit by putting the whisper up here. I think that wasn't filled in before. I'd have to go back and check. But I do know that I did a lot of this 
And I started filling in some of these grays. Oh, and I forgot. All of that extra gold was not there before. So yeah, there's like, this was fun. I think that if I had to pick a couple projects to really focus on um, just for the winter time, I think that this and Winter Queen would probably be top of my list. I just love the blocks are really nice. What happens is that I work on these for a bit, get like a bunch done, feel super accomplished, then I'll jump back to full coverage with all the confetti, get burnt out on confetti, come back, work on this. Like there, that's almost like my perfect back and forth routine that I have found. So I think I'm gonna, because I do wanna do some focusing on getting further on my full coverage, that by nature means that I'm gonna have to do some of these mirabilias, just like I said, is a cleanser to feel like, yep, I don't have to just do confetti. So also, and just isn't the, aren't the colors on this beautiful? I love it. Like so, I this. I don't remember what color red this is, but love, 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 love. It is so beautiful, and I can see. See, I'm basically working my way up so that I can finish her head and then fill back down. With holiday hoodies finished. I realized, I'm like, okay, I know I'd said before, I really wanna narrow down the amount of whips I have. North of 20 is far too many. Really, I should have 10 to 12. Like, I think that would be my sweet spot. But I don't have those right now, which means I need to, mm, honestly, kinda like winnow down. So, the quick and easy victory for me would be this Design Works kit, start doing. I'm not done yet, I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Here's where it was last time. And here it is today. Um, obviously, like I said, not done. So this one I've decided is, this piece actually has something to teach me. All your pieces have something to teach you. You just have to figure out what the lesson is. In this case, I have spent years, and I learned this from knitting first. There are people who consider themselves process people and people who consider themselves product people. And I had always assumed I was a product person because I always, it's about what's at the end, not the journey to get there. This one is, it's not the most beautiful design. It is a adequate design. Um, I actually ran into it, I was like, why is the arrow doesn't come to a single point? Why does it have two? And it doesn't quite like, some of it's a little weird. And then I realized it was being driven by the letters. And so hence why the arrow wasn't strictly the most arrow shaped arrow, whatever. The whole point is that this one I have learned I really actually like stitching on dark fabric. It does not bother me one iota, but if I had, I feel like I need to do this entire piece in large parts so that I know that I can do the kit size on this and not get upset because I have a dimensions kit on Navy Ada that I wanna start. And I can't start it unless I finish two things. Yeah, I'm doing for the new starts, I need to finish two. And I don't even know, does Holiday Hooties count as a finish? Because it was one I added in and then finished. Sure, I guess I will. It was a finish. So the next thing I finish will allow me to do a new start. Um, and I have a bunch of things I'd like to start because I have so much stitching to do and so little time. So, um, but like I said, the process on this has really actually taught me something. So. I mean, I guess it's not, I could stop, but like I said, it's really not that hard to do. This is, like I said, the great one to take places where I don't care if it gets dirty or not, because in the end, it, this one is about the process. Like I said, it's surprisingly easier to stitch on the dark Ada than I thought it would be. Just make sure you have something light colored behind it and it works out right. Or really, really strong lighting also kind of works the same way because then you just see the light through the holes, but having a reflective surface underneath helps too like so like a white sheet of paper or something like not right under but like in your lap i just keep something light colored hanging around it makes sense it works for me anyway and my smallest project i'm following up with what is technically size wise my biggest project it is not the most stitches but i compared winter kiss and its fabric today to this for consider the lilies the cut of fabric for consider the lilies is in fact bigger than for winter kiss which i actually did not know. I really thought Winter Kiss was bigger. But anyway, so this is like my biggest project by sheer just area. And I haven't really been focusing on it. It's the one that I just kind of do eh, as I feel like it. So here's what it was last time. And this is today. I 
basically the only thing I can really say that it, I think I've been filling in a couple more of these fruits up here. Not really focusing on them, just like as they come along, but I finished this. So that was really cool. Like this is 100% done. So what I'm trying to do, I guess now is think to myself, like with the exception of the tree, because I've decided the tree is just too big of a motif to say like, oh, I have to finish it before I move on to the next. So like the next one, I need to finish this because there's like four, four X's worth of another color in the middle that would finish it. Then there's an angel right here to start. So it's one that, again, I haven't been prioritizing. It's really beautiful. So it's like, why don't I? And then I remember it's because I have too many other projects. Uh, and I do realize I like to see, and I have said it before, but it bears repeating. I prefer seeing more progress on less projects instead of little progress on lots of projects, which is the very antithesis of this video. So Oops, <laughs> you're not, I'm still not done. Um, the one I've been working on this week, this has been kind of my most recent, is Teresa Wensler's Fall Carousel Horse. I just decided it would be really fun to work on it because the colors were suiting my mood. Here's where it was last time. And here it is today. I actually got more of that coat put in. Also check out, like, so what I was working on this weekend was specifically filling in a bunch of this mane. I love it, it's so pretty. And then you can see here, so this girth is at the edge, you can't, the edges of the horse is basically down through here. Um, this is its elbow, elbow one, elbow two, its legs are there. And these are tassels coming off of that saddle cloth. So, I don't know. I love it. It is a lot of fun. The quarter stitches are no less tedious than last time I talked about them, but they look so good. So I've just decided, and particularly like as I filled stuff in up here with the mane, I got to, it was like me rediscovering that vision that I said like, oh, I could see how great this looks when I, before I did the cross stitch or the back stitching here. So I am actually going back and like, I have like a whole right here. My goal is basically to fill this in. So as much as I would like to continue up the horse's neck, I'm filling in to the girth. I'm not going past the girth, just filling in to the girth so that I can then complete up this way. But I'm now, I'm basically trying to, instead of going far and ranging because it gets hard to see, is I'm just doing like, but yeah, I don't know. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I I really had a blast with it. And as if all that cross stitch weren't enough, I even managed to get some of my needlepoint in. Um, this is my Bucillicate Geraniums. This is where it was last time. There we go. I am about a third of the way done. Needlepoint goes really fast. Uh, I just, I've really been enjoying this one. It's super fun. I love the colors. I love the geraniums. Um, and I've decided that I was like, okay, I'm gonna continue working on like needle pointing, but I have to finish this one before I can start my next one. I'm definitely, it, it's too bulky space-wise and the yarn, it's, I mean, it takes up space. Like it doesn't store as neatly as all the DMC. So i am decided to like I said, make good life choices here. Part of those good life choices though are, I may have in fact, well, I went to a local needle point store when I was on vacation too. We don't have one locally, so it was an opportunity for me to actually like pick up some supplies before I had to order them online. And it's because I have in fact decided my next project is going to be load in one, which is this one. Um, there is a second load in pattern in this book, this load in number two, but I'm doing starting with this one. I'm not doing it, I haven't decided what my background color is going to be. But I just, I had like a list. It is, the color chart in here is Appleton Wools. So I had the listing, I didn't take the book with me, but went to the needlepoint shop and discovered A, they don't carry Appleton because a lot of needlepointers don't work in wool anymore. They work in like, and they don't use like these, thir like the big 13 count canvas they're using. 18 count and using silk threads and all sorts of very, very lovely things. Like this place has the most amazing selection of pretty much all of the Rainbow Gallery threads. Like so many, like I did not know how many gorgeous threads there were out there and I have now seen them and it's like, ooh, 
I now understand. I mean, to be fair, if you're doing like needlepoint on a hand painted canvas, if you've ever seen how expensive those get, you know what? If you're going to spend the time on it, you might as well do the really nice materials to go with it. Anyway, so they had basically one small section of wool and um, I had to do something a little nerve wracking for me. I had to take those Appleton colors that are from the pattern and translate them into what they had, which in the amount that I needed, uh, it was Waverly wool colors. And so there's no conversions online that are really super obvious. Like there's conversions between Appleton and DMC and the, some of the other like, but there's conversion charts, but there was not a conversion chart for the wool colors. So I was really having to do the, huh, well, what's the effect I'm going for? And it was really, really fun. So as a result, when I finished geraniums, I have, um, this is a fat quarter, which is of Zweigart 14, no support, no, it's 13 count canvas. So it'll work great for what, and then I have all of these lovely colors and I put them all together and they are all basically a close enough. I think they're going to be fantastic. So that was like my other souvenir shopping, but it's the, I need to finish the other one before I get to this one. Um, and the other thing, because they also do like other cool things I didn't expect to find, but I got this link to the needlepoint shop. I, my sticking point on Autumn Queen has been honestly doing the beading. I have a tacky bob. I don't love it. So they recommended the sticky mat because it's honestly just a bigger surface and since it's flat and I can put it on the tabletop, I'm thinking that it would work better for me. I'm hoping because I just don't like how I did, uh, the beads out on the one I have currently. So. I don't know. Wish me luck. I'm hoping that this does something for me so that I, in fact, get Autumn Queen finished because that would be a really nice, easy finish too. Like, I have a couple of, like, super obvious wins, like, sitting in my whip list. Just need to get on them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I felt like it went longer than I necessarily wanted to, but that's what I get for a month in between filming time. Like, I know better than that. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a great week in crafting, and I will see you next time. Bye!